You're going to play big. Say big. big. You're going to play huge. Say huge. huge. You're going to play ginormous. Say ginormous. ginormous. But first, take baby steps. We want so much so fast. My grandmother says, baby, she starts every sentence with baby. She said, baby, the best things you'll ever have from grandma will never come from the microwave. They always come from the oven. And I realized that the best things that you're going to create are going to take time. Build it on cement, not sinking sand. You're going to get tons and tons and tons of tools here. And you're going to want to fast forward. But when you fast forward, you're building on plexiglass. You're building on styrofoam. You're building on wood. You want to build it on cement. Your dream is important enough to outlive you. And so I realized that, that you can't Google download resiliency. You can't Google download tenacity. You can't Google download forgiveness. There are some of the best qualities and characteristics that's going to take you a long way that you need to invest time in and energy in and intention in. You don't just get patience. I want patience. I'm waiting for patience. Somebody's going to piss you off tomorrow. And now you get to test if you have patience. I realized that as I wanted to develop me, I had to be willing to climb and I wanted to get to the top and there's no elevator to the top. I got to do my squats. I got to work on my quads and my hamstrings and my calves because I got to climb to the top. We got to climb. Abundant thinkers keep themselves in a constant state of cognitive dissonance. Write that down. Abundant thinkers keep themselves in a constant state, a constant state of cognitive dissonance. You're creative. Spell it any way you want. Now, what is cognitive dissonance? Cognitive dissonance is when you have literally thought about a, a version of yourself that you're not currently living right now. Meaning the thought that you have of yourself, your behaviors are not congruent with. So your mind becomes disrupted. Your mind says, wait a minute, you're seeing me here, but I, my behaviors aren't here. And when you keep yourself in a constant state, your mind begins to influence your behaviors to be congruent with your thought. Ooh next level cognitive dissonance abundant thinkers that's why he went out to the ocean that's why he's up on stage because constantly seeing himself further than what his behaviors want to really do and then when he does it now I got that down constantly now is being grateful for your now yes yes, yes. Yeah. Being grateful for your now but clearly seeing where you're going and not resting until you get there in that year when I was really broken, I was really broken, I was working at LA Unified School District. <laughs> I was miserable. I was miserable because I wasn't living in my dream. I was just doing a J-O-B. And then one day I said, well, what, what do I need to do? I, I, need, to, I need to buy my freedom. <laughs> That's what I need to do. I need to buy my freedom. Well, I don't know about buying my freedom. I don't know about buying. I don't know about having money saved up. My family didn't have money saved up. My mother used to tell me, oh, this money is burning my pocket. So I know two things about money. It's hot and we can't keep it long. We'd always have one week where we had all the food in the refrigerator and then one week where we were, the refrigerator was empty. Right? Come on, come on. Some of you guys know about that. To this day, I spend so much money on groceries. You guys, oh my God, it's like I'm feeding like a family of 10 because I'm so afraid of anybody ever being in my house and being hungry. And so I, I wrote a check to myself, $110. I took it to the bank, Wells Fargo. I started a new account. The next check I wrote, $125. And just like the first check, I put in the memo line, funding my dream. I wasn't even clear what the dream was but I knew there was something in my belly. Who, who in this room know you got something in your belly? It's something, I'm not even clear about it. I don't know how clear you are, but I wasn't clear about it. But I knew there was a calling on my life greater than working for LA Unified School District. And no disrespect to LA Unified School District, it just wasn't my destiny. I wrote another check in two weeks, $146, funding my dream. Now I started mailing the checks in because I didn't want to see my balance because I didn't want to go shopping. Because you're going to repeat what you learn, right? Until you decide to not repeat what you've learned. So I mailed the check in, and then I wrote another check, and I wrote another check, and every check I wrote, I made sure it was 5% more than the first check, the, the previous check. 
I sold my Altima. I had a car note. Sold my Altima, bought a clunker, because it didn't have a car note. Now I can write a bigger check, funding my dream. I moved out of my three bedroom, three, ba three bath house and moved in, became a roommate with my friend who smoked. I put towels at the base of the door so the smoke wouldn't come through the door. I was willing to be inconvenienced, are you? Yes, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just showing you the story I just, the charge I just gave you. I stopped get, getting my hair done. That was when I started going natural. <laughs> I, I stopped going out. I, I stopped going out dancing. I stopped going out to dinners. My family didn't know what was going on. They thought, oh my God, you know, it was LA. She's on drugs, but she's not losing weight, so maybe not. I don't know what's going on. I kept writing bigger checks to myself. $900. I mailed it to Wells Fargo, funding my dream. I still wasn't clear what the dream was. I just knew I had one, and it was being born through me, and I needed to give it a chance. That's all I knew. You don't have to see 2,000 feet in front of you. Just see 200, then run to the 200. Three and a half years later, I'd written a check to myself every two weeks for three and a half years. I didn't go out for three and a half years. I didn't go dancing. I didn't get my hair done. I didn't get my nails done for three and a half years. Are you willing to be inconvenienced for your conviction? I walk in to Wells Fargo three and a half years later and I said, hi, God bless you, hi. My name is Lisa Nichols. She was, oh my gosh, you're the fun in my dream, lady. I was like, yeah, I guess I am. And all of a sudden, all the tellers came running around. The manager came, they're like, oh my God, okay, oh my God, we have been wondering. We all got the same question. Y'all know what the question is, right? <laughs> What's your dream? I was like, um, I'm not sure, but I know that it includes inspiring people having people believe in themselves again, teaching them how to get back up when they've been knocked down, having them be willing to give themselves a thousand second chances. And every time they get to 999, press reset. I'm not sure what it's gonna look like, but it's just gonna help people. I said, I came to check my balance. I've been writing a few checks to you guys. I said, yes, you've been writing a lot. I said, I just want to check my balance. He said, you don't know your balance? I said, no, I got this really big stack of summary bank statements at home because my mama said money burns her pocket and I don't want it to burn my pocket. I want it to pay for my freedom. I said, I just came to see what my balance was if I had enough to fund my dream as it gets clear. She wrote it down, everyone's excited. She wrote it down, turned it around to me. I looked at it, I said, Oh no, my name is Lisa Shantae Nichols, and my social security number, I said, that is not my money. And I am not taking that money because you're probably going to want it back. So just fix that error right now. And they looked at me. They said, you really don't think that's yours? I said, no, my family's never had $5,000 in the bank or $10,000 in the bank. That's $62,500 in the bank. They said, Miss Nichols, and everyone teared up. The manager teared up, the tellers teared up. They said, Miss Nichols, whatever your dream is, I think you can fund it now. And so it began with a $110 check. So I don't know what yours is. I don't know what your radical looks like. For some of you, your radical was coming here. Yes, yes. This is the beginning of your radical. This is, the, this is the, be, the next best step. This is the first step. And so I just stopped by to let you know you're on the right path. And as you ramp up, as you ramp up, you're going to have questions. You're going to be afraid. I do more things afraid now than I do fearless. Because the bigger you play, the bigger your breakdowns. Every single one of my errors in the last five years have cost me six figures like every single one. I'm playing big, so be willing to go to the edge. And this is where you are here. Be willing to go to the edge and not just lean over and feel the breeze and watch the people jump 
and watch them soar and look through the windows at all the people who are living great lives. Don't just go to the edge and feel it. Be willing to lean. Feel your heartbeat. Feel it. That lets you know you're alive. That lets you know you're okay. Fear fuels you. Fear lets you know, go get more information. Fear lets you know, stay up a little later and study. Fear lets you know, get up a little earlier. Fear lets you know, ask for help. Fear is informing you. It's not stopping you. It's just another emotion like love and compassion and gratitude. We just made it paralyze us. See, fear doesn't stop me. Fear informs me. And when you get intimately connected with the fear, I feel it and I'm moving forward anyway. I feel it and I'm gonna love anyway. I feel it and I'm gonna invest in me anyway. I feel it and I'm gonna show up and play anyway. When you get connected with fear, it becomes your best friend. And when you stand on the edge, you feel the breeze, you feel the fear and you leap anyway.